How to make a great lesson plan. This is probably the most important thing for any teacher, especially for a new teacher. Over my career, uh, you know, I did a lot of teaching, training, professional development, as well as uh, mentoring of novice teachers. And, and one of the more important and difficult challenges for novice teachers is this lesson planning process. Uh, because there's so many different elements that go into it. There is the standards, there's the objectives, there's the activities and the assessment, which is what we're covering here in part one. In the classroom, the teacher is the director. You know, think of the classroom as your play and on stage and your students are your actors. And so the lesson plan is your script. What are you going to do? How do you want the students to do the work? Where do you want them to move within the room? So the first four elements are the standards, your objective, then the activities, and the assessment that you're gonna do on all of those things. With those first four elements, you'll have the foundation for a good lesson plan. And obviously you'll have an idea as to what you're trying to have the students accomplish and a way to actually track to see if they did or didn't. And you can go back and review if necessary. The first element is your standards, and the United States came up with something called the Common Core Standards. Uh, each state uh, decided to either adopt those or create new ones. Uh, I am spent my entire career here in the state of New Jersey, and New Jersey decided to take the Common Core and go one step above that. Um, so writing lesson plans here in New Jersey happens to be extremely complicated. Uh, but for most of you, you're going to be using the Common Core Standards, which are, are pretty straightforward. The second and third goal or objective within this video is to do both the objective of the lesson and also the activity. And they go hand in hand because let's give an example. Um, let's say you're teaching English and you're trying to have the students cite textual evidence from a work of nonfiction. Um, so what you would do in terms of the activity is you would present a piece. Let's say you could either do a novel, you could do a book, you could do research, you could do whatever that was nonfiction oriented, have the students read it, and then show them how to actually cite properly that information that you're looking for out of the text and into a paper. And you could actually walk them through the steps which would give you all of the activities within that lesson. Um, again, most periods are running anywhere between 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Sometimes you have a block schedule or maybe you'll have 90 minutes. So you maybe you could do the example in the first part of the period and then have them do it in the second part of the period. So that's how you tackle both the objective and the activity together. Lastly is the assessment part. And as I alluded to before, you could do standards-based assessment, which means we use that example of citing textual evidence within a work of nonfiction. What you would do is once the student was done with the, their part of the assignment, you've done the modeling, now the student is doing their part, you could actually create a rubric based off of just that one standard, or you could combine a couple standards, but let's just use that one, citing textual evidence in a work of nonfiction. And so if you've shown the student how to do it, your assessment would then be to look and see, did the student actually cite the information the way that you had taught them how to? The key would be to make sure that the student actually understood what you were trying to teach them. So let's use this example. If the student did not cite the information the way you wanted to, basically, let's say that they paraphrased and they didn't cite it, or they did take a quote, but it wasn't exactly on point to what you were trying, what they were trying to say. So they, they kind of understood the technical aspects of citing uh, information from a text. They didn't understand the comprehension of what they were reading or what they were trying to explain. And so comprehension plus technical skills in English and in grammar are both important. So if you look at it as a block, so you have your standards as your roadmap. Say, okay, that's what I need the students to understand at the end of all of this. Then my objective is obviously to plan out which one of the standards or several of the standards that I want them to choose. 
and then the activities, which is really where your script comes down. So remember, we talked about it as a block. So if you're doing, let's say, citing textual evidence, that's an English standard, you would have an activity which could be broken down to first reading the text and then citing the text. So you have two activities out of one objective. Uh, and then the assessment out of that would be to do comprehension. Did they understand the text they read? And let's say they read for five minutes. So maybe they had to read two or three pages in five to 10 minutes. And so you could test them questions on, did they understand the text? And then you could also give them an activity to see whether or not they could cite the information. You can have maybe one lesson on day one, which is all about the formative, see whether or not the students get it. They can do trial and error. They can experiment. They can try it, you know, and say, oh, you know, I think I got this. And then on day two, then you give them a quiz on it. And so what you're doing is helping them actually learn the information. You're giving them feedback on whether or not they know it. And then when the test or quiz comes into class, they're not so anxious anymore to do it because they've already tried and failed without repercussion for grades.